now. A Talk TV investigation has revealed footage of preachers in several mosques across the UK calling for Jews to be killed and Israel to be destroyed. A dossier of video evidence has been given to the police and officers are now actively investigating four of the seven mosques we highlighted. Holly Hudson has this exclusive report which comes with a warning that some viewers may find its content offensive. Allah Akbar. A sermon at the Redbridge Islamic Centre in Ilford. The speaker prays with his congregation in Arabic to curse the Jews and the children of Israel. Talk TV had the recording translated twice independently. It's voiced by an actor. O oh Allah, curse the Jews and the children of Israel. O oh Allah, curse the infidels and the polytheists. O oh Allah, break their words, shake their feet, disperse and tear apart their unity, and ruin their houses and destroy their homes. And from London to Liverpool. If the three billion just marched on Israel, it's all over. The spot in the direction of Israel, two billion, it's all over. To Birmingham. The stones, the stones will speak and say, Oh Muslim, behind me there is a Yahudi, come and kill him. Preachers at mosques across Britain have been filmed calling for victory for Hamas. Oh God, heal our hearts regarding the usurping Jews and in every enemy of you and the Muslims. Oh God, limit their number, kill them indiscriminately, and do not leave any of them alive. Oh God, our Lord, disperse them. Weaken their strength, shake the ground beneath their feet, and freeze the blood in their veins. Make them captive to the Muslims. And stoking hatred against Jews and Israel with alarming anti-Semitic rhetoric. O oh, revenger, revenge from the oppressive aggressor occupying Zionists. O oh, Allah, shake the earth beneath them. O oh, Allah, limit their number, kill them indiscriminately, and do not leave any of them alive. Rhetoric that in some cases is as violent as that of Abu Hamza, the known hate preacher who delivered sermons at Finsbury Park Mosque before it was shut down and who was deported from the UK. In Greenwich, this speaker ended his prayers with calls for Allah to grant victory over the enemy. The Met said while it understands the footage raised concern in Greenwich, no offences had been committed there. Jewish groups, though, say that police aren't doing enough and are calling for prosecutions in some cases, warning that some of these sermons could lead not only to hate crime, but extremism and even terror. There is no difference between the rhetoric in the Hamas charter and the rhetoric that is on display in these videos. They are utterly hateful, they are violent, and they are a threat to both Jews and non-Jews in this country there is a real risk of more than just one person being encouraged by this rhetoric to go out and take action on the streets. And we've seen how bad that can be in the past. Talk TV has confirmed that police are assessing video evidence from four of the seven mosques we've highlighted. The Charities Commission is also examining some of the footage, as the majority are also linked to registered charities, meaning they receive taxpayers' money. In a statement, they said, we are aware of a significant number of serious concerns which largely concern allegations of anti-Semitic or hate speech. We're assessing them, and if there has been any wrongdoing, we'll take action. Talk TV reached out to all of the mosques and figures featured in this report. Redbridge Islamic Centre declined to comment directly to us, but previously said it launched an immediate investigation and decided that the imam will not be allowed to address worshippers again until it's concluded. No other mosques responded. Well, joining us now is strategic advisor at the counter-extremism project, Liam Duffy. I mean, Liam, I think to many people watching, that will be both shocking and yet not surprising. Uh, how do you react to that? Yeah, I think that's bang on. I think um, I'm not exactly shocked by it. I think your piece rightly mentioned uh, Abu Hamza, who people know as the hate preacher back from the 90s and early 2000s, um, linked to kind of the global Salafi jihadist movement. But this this transcends that, and that's kind of what's concerning. We're not talking about, you know, a jihadist-linked mosque or an Islamist-linked mosque. We're, we're talking about all sorts of different denominations um, kind of fueling this rhetoric uh, that, that you've shown in your piece. Um, it's obviously intensified around the, the flaring up of conflict in, in the Middle East, but it's not exactly new and unfortunately has been going on for, for quite some time. 
Uh, to make matters worse, uh, these imams are apparently, uh, Liam, quite proud of all this stuff because they post their uh, sermons, if that's what you call them, onto Facebook. They make them public. So they don't feel they're doing anything wrong. Uh, we suspect uh, that they are breaking our hate crime laws. And as such, uh, we've alerted uh, all of the local police forces to the seven mosques we investigated. Uh, so far, only four of the uh, police forces we contacted said they will investigate or they are investigating. Uh, the others say that uh, they don't think any laws have been broken broken here, but surely calling, inciting violence like that uh, technically is against our laws, isn't it? Mm. Well, yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I mean, one of the ways that we get around this, you saw in the piece that you, you the really excellent investigation that you guys have produced, um, I think what, one of the things they're invoking is a kind of final apocalyptic prophecy. So I think one of the ways that, that this will be got around is saying, you know, we're talking about scripture here, we're not talking about you know, we're not calling for anyone to do anything. Unfortunately, you know, if you're talking in those kind of apocalyptic terms, it only leaves, doesn't leave much of the imagination about what that could inspire in someone. Um, but the broader point here is that um, it's, it's clear, I said, I'm not, I'm not exactly surprised or, or, or shocked by, by these revelations, but what is clear is that both kind of institutions of state and civil society, we don't really have a response to this. Like, we don't really know what to do. There's all, and there's an awful lot that can be done short of, you know, arrest in charges against these individuals and, or their institutions that just isn't being done. And that, you know, encompasses the Charity Commission. I noticed, I think, with the case in Greenwich, the local MP condemned the remarks. You know, that, that was notable because it was so rare. We need a lot more condemnation and scrutiny yeah. and accountability for these sort of things that just isn't happening. Every time we get evidence of some form of extremism within the Muslim community uh, in society, we are bombarded with a deluge of arguments saying Islam is a peace-loving religion. This doesn't represent Muslims at all. And yet, when there are social attitude surveys conducted, some of the results of some of the sort of commonly held beliefs within the community are, are really quite unnerving. How would you measure the prevalence of uh, mosques and, and rhetoric in mosques such as this within the community is it sort of an exception to the rule and a small mm. exception at that or is this sort of far more widespread than perhaps we're being led to believe uh, i do think it's more widespread than we think i think over the years we've painted this picture of extremism and and particularly the word radicalization as kind of this thing that's confined to the shadows i don't think it's that simple i think there's a lot more mainstream uh things happening uh, I, I wouldn't be confident talking about the extent of this because, as I said, I returned to my previous answer, kind of the investigations um, by the organisations that are usually on kind of hair trigger alert for hate and extremism, they're just not happening uh, when it comes to this. And I think part of the reason is, you know, you said we're bombarded by certain things is some people are scared, they don't want to be, be called racist or Islamophobic. Um, some One of the things that people like me and colleagues who look at Islamist extremism are accused of constantly is that we're feeding a far-right narrative. Um, well, actually, I think, you know, silence on this is what feeds the far-right narrative. And you look at European uh, election results in the last few years and far-right parties are surging in Europe. I think if people genuinely don't want that to happen here, they need to get a handle on this. Otherwise, people are going to come in who do want to talk about this and you might not like what they say. The problem here, I think, Liam, is that, you know, mosques, unlike, shall we say, the Church of England, they don't have attendance problems, as you can see from our film there. I mean, they're packed out. So you have these hate preachers uh, delivering these hate-filled sermons about destroying Israel and the blood of uh, being drained from the veins of the infidel and all that. Uh, so you, this is uh, passed on to these vast congregations who then go out into the community and thus it spreads. Uh, so uh, we have to come up with a way, do we not, of stopping these kind of preachers. Uh, and surely, as you uh, alluded to earlier, maybe, you know, if the police don't want to get too tough and start arresting these people, surely they could go down and say, if you deliver any more of these destroy Israel, kill all Jews uh, sermons, uh, you will be arrested. How about the police being proactive in that way? Yeah, I think that's certainly a good idea. And like I said, there is there is a lot of courses of action that, that fall beneath that threshold of arrest and charge. I mean, you know, especially we can't identify necessarily offences that, that have been committed. But to kind of link back to the previous question, it's, in, it's entirely possible to hold these institutions and these individuals to account without uh, invoking or involving, you know, large numbers of ordinary Muslims who are just trying to get on with their lives and, and you know, don't necessarily identify with this rhetoric. 
Um, those two things are not you know, mutually exclusive. That can be done. Um, and I think certainly, like I come back to the organizations, we've got a kind of counter extremism field or a preventing radicalization field in this country that, um, you know, in some cases is quite lavishly funded. I just don't see what they're doing on this. I don't really see over the years what the Charity Commission has, has done on this that really has teeth. These are all things that can be done. And like I said, whether it's mayors, MPs, local councils, you know, there needs to be accountability on this. It needs to be communicated very clearly to these institutions that this is not acceptable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's deeply concerning. Liam Duffy, Strategic Advisor to the Counter-Extremism Project, thank you so much for coming on the show.